everybody. Um, so before we get started, what I'd like everybody to do is just take your hands and just clap them as hard as you can together. Okay, that was good. So <laughs> we'll wake everybody up a little. <laughs> um, the other nice thing about your hands is, of course, if you just bend it a little bit and you think about your middle tip of your middle finger and the base of your um, the base of your palm, and then you think of the width here, you've actually created a tetrahedron. You have four points. And then if you do the exact same thing on your other hand, and you take that hand, and then you turn it at a right angle, and you place them together, now you've brought those two tetrahedrons together. So let's start. <laughs> OK. so. I designed this Tetra Ball puzzle years ago. I showed it with John. And uh, last year, we decided to write a paper together. And um, I have an example up. Uh, I'm also selling a few. That's my quick plug up in the room. Uh, I have about 80. So um, anyway, uh, it's a four-color puzzle. And I'm going to talk about a little bit more. But first, I want to talk about the Bor Romian rings. Um, they've come up quite a bit uh, for me lately. And uh, of course, we all know what they are. There's three rings. They're really not linked. Uh, these are made out of a latex tubing, which is really nice because it slides through each other. And it's a nice way to flatten it out, make it three-dimensional, that sort of thing. Um, now, this is the amazing geometry machine, which is also three colors. And it occurred to me oh, a few years ago that it also uh, relates to the Bohr Romian rings. Some say Boromian, some say Borromean. So choose your uh, expression. So here, red is inside of blue, blue is inside of yellow, yellow is inside of red. So um, we'll keep moving along. Uh, then six loops, six rings. This is the knobbly wobbly ball uh, that I designed years ago. Uh, and again, it's two by three. So there's a nice, now these all link. But if you use this same sort of latex material, it's nice to flatten out. It's nice to look at the, pick, the patterns. Um, and then there's one of my biggest fans right there. Um, and then a few years ago, also, Robbie the Kill, this was one of the gifts earlier in one of the earlier G4. But since this is G4 12, there are actually 12 ways to arrange those six colors. And Robbie wrote a paper on the automorphism of S6. Uh, so you can look that up um, at some point if you feel like that. Uh, this actually is showing a diagram where you see them from the front, then I cut a section through them. You can see the purple is always the plane, uh, and then th the back, and uh, just the different color orientations that way. And someone in Australia takes the knobbly wobbly and makes it for parrots, and she calls it the atom of love. And it's one of my favorites, so I just had to show it. <laughs> we continue. Um, a quick side, uh, I did this art piece for uh, the New York Hall of Science called Scattered Light last year. It's still up. If you're in New York, I encourage you to go. Um, this is how it looks. Let's see if it will play. There, it's playing a little bit. So um, it's about 700 strips of 28 foot long flagging tape, orange and pink. And it's in a triangular gridded array as you um, go there. Um, and this is just one more view of it. OK, here we are to the Tetraval puzzle. And down below, this is where you can read um, the article that John and I wrote. Uh, it's basically a five-piece puzzle. And the object is that uh, no color touches itself. And there are, um, there are basically five Tetraballs. And what you find is that the arrangements, uh, uh, what, what John and I saw is that you can, um, the arrangement is you have one and you have the mirror. So that was part of the reason I did the hand thing in the beginning. So there is the enantiomorph. So the original one that I showed John, I actually had glued them all together. And I had a four and one arrangement, which we call zero up. And the nice thing that you see there is if you look at the edges, there are six edges on a tetrahedron. Uh, and there are six ways to pair four colors. So on every edge, there's that pair of color. Um, 
and then uh, what happens, and that actually happens to be the four and one arrangement. So there's one enantiomorph inside. Uh, the next one, what we do is we simply switch one, the upper edge. And when you look at the paper, it's, it's clear, so I don't want to take too long. But what's nice at the one up is you'll see the top diagonal is still blue, yellow, blue, yellow, but around the edges, you have three colors in there, okay? And then on the last one, which is two up, we've switched again the edges. So we have two edges that are two colors, and then there's four colors on the remaining four, four edges, so they move around. And the next is, um, this is a puzzle that I did years ago. Again, I'm in the four color range. Uh, this is pairs, and you flip it. Uh, it's 12 balls that become the icosa ball, you know, related to the icosahedron. Uh, so this is three configurations, no color touching itself, a color in a row, and then the color goes to uh, the triangles, and uh, they all are all touching each other. And this is sort of how that lays out the cards. So you're just flipping two ends of the, of the postcard, in a sense, to move to each one. Um, so we come back to the Borromean rings, uh, and, oh, sorry, flip past that. So this is the gift Scott Hudson and I are giving this year. Uh, you'll all get this in. It's 12 balls, it's six pairs, and you put it together, and there's four colors, and uh, that's what you'll get. So thank you.